Hey girl, it's Emily. Just popping in real quick to let you know that I have a few spots open for one-on-one -on -one coaching this month and I'd love to help you personally have it hack your health. If you need more customization with your habit loops and more accountability, then this is for you. Just go to bit.ly slash coaching with Emily. It's linked in the show notes to book a free 15-minute discovery call to find out more, but hurry before the spots fill up. Hey girl, do you wish you could make your healthy habits stick, but life keeps getting in the way? Are you tired of diet culture telling you to shrink yourself when you'd rather just find true food freedom, move your body for joy, and feel and look good in your favorite leggings? Then you're in the right place. Think of this as atomic habits for women. Hey, I'm Emily Nichols, habit and fitness coach, millennial mom, and Taco Tuesday enthusiast. I'm here to tell you there is an easier way than what we've been taught about health and our habits. How do I know? Because I've gone from former chronic dieter to habit hacker through the power of the system that I'm now going to teach you so you can finally stop dieting and just train for life via your habits. Remember, it's not your fault your healthy habits haven't stuck. We just have to do them differently. Are you ready to habit hack your health? Then let's do this. You're listening to episode 241 of Habit Hack Your Health. Hey friend, welcome back to the show. Oh my goodness, just a little behind the scenes for you. When I record episodes, I'm usually home alone and I'm recording this on a Friday and a lot of times my husband works from home on Fridays and I love it because I usually will like make breakfast for us to have together and we have a little more conversations together in time but I get distracted so easily and I'm so glad that I have the accountability of having to show up for these episodes twice a week for you because otherwise I would just keep pushing it further and further behind plus I've had to hit stop and delete and record on this a couple of times because of Amazon coming my dog barking my husband using the leaf blower outside. It's a thing, right? We're all just trying our best. But I kind of alluded to what we're talking about today, and that's accountability. Accountability is hard, right? Self-accountability is just the worst, especially when it comes to our health. And I just want to kind of start with the basics here when it comes to health and accountability. So let's just start with what's the definition of accountability. So it's an obligation or willingness to accept responsibility or to account for one's actions. It's the quality or state of being accountable. So leaning into that atomic habits for women philosophy and how we have to do things differently, we have to think, why haven't I been able to hold myself accountable for my health? Why am I always starting and stopping. In doing research for this episode, I saw a few interesting things that I thought you could really relate to because I did as well. Studies have found that people prefer shifting the blame from themselves to other people for, or situations. Like, you know, I'm just, I'm too busy. I'm a busy working mom. I, I just don't, I can't, you know, take care of myself. That's selfish. And it makes it natural for us to avoid responsibility or being accountable for not sticking to our goals. It's a habit, right? It's a habit that many of us have formed. It's an actual habit where we are trying to do something and we have no accountability for it when it comes to our health. Now, accountability can be challenging because maybe many of us have like past trauma from it, right? You might be filled with a lot of shame or judgment. Maybe you tried various forms of accountability and it didn't work out and you felt like embarrassed, right? Maybe you put out on social media, you were going to try something and uh, for like working out like three times a week and you didn't do it and you felt embarrassed, right? Or maybe the problem with accountability stems from you're really just overextending yourself <laughs> a lot of times and that gives you more like permission not to do the thing. In doing more research for this episode, according to the American Society of Training and Development, they did a study and it said you are 95% more likely to succeed by simply directing accountability to a third party. Like, girl, you got to get out of your own way, right? We got too many other things going on. We've overextended ourselves. We have past failures where we don't trust ourselves to try to do the thing with our health because we're always st stopping and starting and we just aren't accountable. But if you shift the 
simply shift it to a third party, research shows that even a little accountability outside of yourself produces measurable results when it comes to reaching your goals, right? If you have a goal, you're 10 times or 10% more likely to complete the goal if you have other forms of accountability besides yourself. (laughs) So you'll hear me share in this episode with our guest today, Jess, how I used to have like that super high Monday motivation, right? You know what I'm talking about, where you have a plan, you got your planner out, you're like, I'm going to meal prep, meal prep, I got my workout clothes laid out, I'm going to work out, I'm going to meal prep, and I've done that before and I never told anybody. I would never tell anybody that I was going to start something because really due to the fact from my past failures and not trusting myself. And I would never follow through. It was so frustrating, right? You get so frustrated with yourself. Now, we talk about this more about how we don't trust ourselves and why women have to do habits differently in my private podcast series, Atomic Habits for Women. You can go to bit.ly slash Atomic Habits for Women to listen. It's a five-series episode where we just break down why women have to do habits differently. A lot of times it starts with that mentality. So what worked for me? How did I become a habit and fitness coach if I was not good with self-accountability? Well, if we take a step back in time to 2015, which is like, oh my gosh, nine years ago now. It's insane, this journey we've been on together. What really worked for me for accountability was back in 2015, my husband wanted to do a Whole30. And I was like, no. No way. I'm not giving up cookies, wine, margaritas, tacos, none of that. But as I dug deeper into it, I was like, okay, I had some really intense emotional eating habits and I really wanted to do this for him. He was coming off a long time of shift work and getting his sleep back under control and he just wanted to be healthier, right? He wanted to set a good example for our boys, but also he wanted to get back to running one of his passions. And um, you guys have heard his story before. Over time, he lost 50 pounds. Like he's a, a Boston marathoner. He's a triathlete, an Ironman, all the things. Like, he's insane. But it really started with him needing an accountability partner. And I don't know how well a husband works most of the time for accountability, but this worked for us. This worked for us. Now, I couldn't compare myself to him, but we could do this together and have accountability. And for me, and another reason why women have to do habits differently, I was doing this to help him. We're such nurturing beings that that really helped me. And in the process, over 30 days, I was like, dang, I lost 10 pounds, but I felt amazing. And I really was able to identify my habits and relationship with food. I was also getting like daily emails. And eventually when I've done other programs in the past, like text messages for um, motivation and accountability really helped me as well. Posting to social helped. And so I need forms of outside accountability. That helps me feel empowered in creating my own habits and sticking with them and reaching my health and fitness goals. And sometimes I got to remind myself of this, right? We get kind of caught up in our own minds. When I started my podcast and started coaching clients one-on-one, it actually started with Whole30 and then teaching group fitness and then digging super deep and becoming a behavior change specialist, starting the podcast. You all know you've been here on this journey with me. I actually started doing one-on-one coaching with a business and podcast coach to ensure I was putting content out there that really would serve you all. And that was next level for me. It was an investment, but also I need one-on-one accountability. Like a lot of you get the pod course and then I know some of you go on to do one-on-one coaching with me because you need more of that accountability. I can't tell you how many courses I bought in the past and never did them. Maybe you need something more one-on-one. Well, as I was continuing on as well, I joined a running group of girls here in my community where we would run together. We started signing up for half marathons, but more than anything, I don't like running, but I really wanted to meet other girls and we had coffee together afterwards, which was my favorite part. And what really happened from there was I got more outside accountability from other women who were similar to me. So That's a lot of trial and error and time after time in my own health and my professional goals as a habit and fitness coach, I had to seek out various forms of accountability and sometimes it's you have to experiment with it to see what works best for you. So today we're chatting with an actual accountability coach to help us do 
just that. So today we are talking with Jessica Smith. Jess is a mom of two, married to her best friend, and on a mission to help women create and maintain healthy habits for life. Yes, she's speaking our love language already. (laughs) She helps women learn to eat like they love themselves and move their bodies with intention and consistency. Jess is your hype girl, motivated guru, and forever cheerleader to become a better version of you. You're going to really love this conversation, and I think it's going to help you dig deeper into figuring out what types of form of accountability you need. Start taking action with it so you are able to reach your health and fitness goals. So make sure to stick around to the end of our conversation with Jess, because as always, I'll share my three biggest takeaways for you. You got your pen and paper handy. You have your voice notes open, ready to go. All right, girl, let's talk to Jess. Okie dokie, gang. I am so glad you are here. Welcome back to the show. Today, we're talking with Jessica Smith of The Fit Life with Jessica. We are talking all things accountability today. I can't wait to chat with you. Jessica, welcome to the show. Yes. Thank you, friend. I am so excited to be here. Same. All right, girl. Well, the first question I ask everyone is what is your favorite habit hack you have going on in your life right now? Oh, that's such a good question. And for me right now in my life, it's just thinking ahead about meal planning a little bit. It's Mm -hmm. thinking about what is the menu going to be for the week? It doesn't mean you have to spend, you know, seven hours in the kitchen on Sunday, like making it all, but just thinking ahead and planning out those nourishing meals is my biggest hack right now. Oh, that's everything. Well, just putting that forefront in the forefront of your mind and being intentional. Cause when they ask the dreaded question, what's for dinner, you already have something in your mind, right? That's the worst question that like, that's, that is my four letter word. What's for dinner. And then when my five-year-old's like, this is gross. I don't want to eat that. It's like so triggering. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we we had we totally went and had Mexican last night, but that's very on brand for our family. And they're Love like, mom it. doesn't want to cook. Let's go get Mexican. Love All it. right. Okay. Well, let's learn a little bit more about you, Jess. What is your story? So tell us a little bit about yourself and what you do. Yes. Yes. So I am a mom. I have two kiddos. I'm married to my high school sweetheart, which is kind of gross and kind of cool at the same time. Same. And um, we live in Georgia. So if you hear that little Southern twang come out, usually it's after two glasses of wine that it comes out, but luckily we're recording in the morning and I haven't had any yet today. So there we go. Um, but I am a corporate dropout. I used to be in advertising sales in my former life. That's what I call it. So I did, um, digital and print advertising sales in the wedding industry, ironically. And, um, I am a pandemic pivot person, right? Middle of 2020, um, my whole life and career changed when I left my corporate job and, um, really a clue what I was going to do. And my business was born. We were out on the lake one day out on our boat. We were just dreaming about like, what do I like doing? What do I love? What am I passionate about? Where, like what lights me up? And we kept like kind of putting together all these little pieces of the puzzle about how I've always loved, you know, working out and fitness. I've always wanted to be a teacher and help people and kind of pulling in that Enneagram two helper in me, um, pulling in my, you know, love and passion for nutrition and accountability and like the journey that I had been on to really wake up to being my own accountability partner all kind of came together. And I was like, why don't I try this? You know, like, why don't I just try starting my own business? I have no idea what I'm doing, but like, let's just try it. If they can do it, I can do it too. Um, so it's been three years now of helping women. And what I do is help them create realistic habits when it comes to their fitness, their nutrition, and just their overall well being, so that they can feel better and do better in life. I love that so much. Are you, are you teaching fitness or anything at all? I used to, I yeah, used okay. to be a trainer, um, for a couple of local gyms here, awesome. but I got burnt out on that. Oh, yeah, <laughs> I'm not have, doing that right now. I get that. I hear that. I hear that. I've done the full gamut of personal training, group fitness, all the things. So awesome. I love that so much. Well, and I love that you were able to like really dig deep and think about, well, what is my passion and how can that help others at the same time, which pair that together, you're going to be so much more successful and fulfilled, right? Love that. So, okay, well, let's talk a little bit about what does the word fit really mean? Because I feel like as women, especially as like busy working moms, the water's really been muddied by like 
diet culture. And when we think of the word fit, we think like fit pros on Instagram show, sharing their before and after pictures of like how pumped they are and like in their little bikinis and stuff like that. And I think that's either really motivating for folks or really demotivating. So what in your opinion does the word fit really mean? That's such a good question. And I, and I feel like it's evolved over the years for me as a human, as a mom, even as a, you know, what I'm showing on terms of social media. But if I'm talking about what fit mean to me on a like on a cellular level, it's really, it's feeling good in my own body. And then I know that's like probably so overset and so overused, but I'm, I'm past like the vanity metrics of like a number on a scale or having six pack abs or like, I'm just beyond that. Like, yeah, that'd be really nice, <laughs> but it's more about how do I feel every day? Does my body hurt or do I feel good and strong? Am I able to lift my kids up effortlessly? Am I able to run around with them outside? Am I able to, you know, make it through a really long strenuous day of calls or zooms or interviews or whatever, and just sustain that energy. So really it's, it's feeling good. And then like this, the part B answer of that question is really, you know, it's being able to live a long time. Like, again, like the older I get, the more I realize, you know, I only get one human, <laughs> I only get one body and I really have to invest in it and take care of it. Um, so that I can live a long time and be around for my kiddos and to set a really good example for them so that they know what it's like to be healthy and not have a toxic relationship mm-hmm. with food or exercise or their body or, you know, any of the things. Yeah. I love that so much. And I know my audience is really going to resonate with that, Jess, because I think a lot of women are at the point, you know, like I'm 42. I've seen like so many different diets come and go. I saw my mom do so many different ones. And I'm at the point where I'm just like over it. And I just want to feel good. Like I know movement helps me feel so good and gives me energy and helps me feel great about myself and my confidence, not just physically, but more so mentally, emotionally, spiritually. Right. And I want to eat, I want to go out and have like tacos with my family and like not feel bad about it or shame. And I love that you said that because we talk a lot about training for life here on this show. And I'm like, I want to be like an old grandma someday, like maybe doing like yoga retreats or something like that. And just like getting up (laughs) and off the floor and like traveling and doing really cool stuff instead of just sitting like on a lazy boy the rest of my life. You know what I mean? (laughs) I love that training for life. That's so true. And that's, I mean, I have like hashtag goals to be like one of those like active grandmas. I want them to look at me and be like, you're a grandma. Like what? Like I want to be the grandma that's maybe not running marathons, but like she's out walking in her neighborhood, like every single day. And I'm, I'm here for the retreats. Like if I can get on some yoga retreat lists and I'll be there with you, Emily. Oh my gosh. Okay. Jess, you and me with our little gray hair looking like super awesome because you heard it here first (laughs) vertical and moving our bodies. I love it. I love it. I love it. Okay. Well, let's talk a little bit about accountability. This is huge for my audience and it's so hard because I think a lot of times as busy working moms, we have the best of intentions. We have all these healthy habits. We want to try to start implementing, but we need accountability. And there are different kinds of accountability. So what type of accountability um, tips or tricks do you see out there that work for you and your clients? Maybe some that are kind of out of the box even. Yeah, definitely. I mean, accountability is one of those things where it didn't really, I didn't have that light bulb moment until gosh, well, after I had kids and I I was reading a book and this is like, this was the light bulb spark for everything for me. Like, this is what was like the, the spark for the business later on, you know, down the road. It was, I was reading a book. Um, it was girl, wash your face when that was like big, when it first came out, I'm talking 2017, 2018. And um, this chapter is all about like breaking promises to yourself and like how here I am like miss recovering people pleaser. Um, would never imagine make breaking a promise to somebody else, but why am I breaking the promise to me? If I say I'm going to go run today, I'm breaking a promise. If I'm not running, if I say I'm not going to drink and then I'm pouring a glass of wine at five 30, I am breaking that promise to myself. And it just, it was, I had never thought of it in that way before, how I would never, ever break a promise to a friend. If I said, I'm going to, you know, meet you for coffee at 10, I'm going to be there. And that was a huge wake up call for me. Like I am 
really sabotaging my own self by breaking these promises. So that was kind of the wake up call for me. And everybody's accountability needs are so different. Like we're all motivated differently. Um, I'm really a big fan of Gretchen Rubin. She wrote the four tendencies and she's got a really cool free quiz you can take where you can, um, see what kind of motivated, like how you're motivated, whether you're motivated externally and accountability, whether you're more internally motivated, maybe you're a rebel or a questioner. So finding out what kind of motivator you are first, like how you need to be motivated is definitely a key, but I think most people just want to feel like they're not alone in this process, right? So when I'm working with clients, whether it's in a group capacity or whether it's one-on-one, it's really about helping her know she's not alone in this. It's about helping her know it's not all or nothing. That's definitely something else I see a lot. It's like, even if you, you know, did not do what you said you were going to do today, that's okay. We start again tomorrow. We're not starting over. We're starting again tomorrow. And then helping her know that, you know, I'm here when you need that extra push, but I can't do it for you. You know, I can cheer you on. I can root for you. I can ask to see your, you know, steps at the end of the day, but you know, you've really got to want it for yourself. And that is really what I'm helping these women understand and discover and cultivate within themselves. And I think it's kind of trial and error, right? Like, I think when I started on my own healthy habit journey, my accountability was my husband, which may or may not work for everybody in that season. It worked okay (laughs) for me having like an, another person like focusing on healthy habits under my roof was really a really big motivator for me. Whereas in the past, you know, I would make these goals for myself, but I wouldn't share them with anybody for that fear of failure. I didn't want people to see me failing and thus I would fail because I had no accountability built in there. And then I would just, it's almost like a cycle, right? Just where you're just starting and stopping, starting and yeah. stopping. And then you just don't trust yourself to do anything. Then you do nothing. Hence the all or nothing mentality, right? Absolutely. And I do hear a lot of women saying, you know, they've started with their husband as their accountability coach or their partner. And it's one of those things where either it works really awesome for them, or it's like really triggering for them. Some yeah, people right? it's like, maybe their husband is, um, super athletic, like mine, like my husband is a unicorn. He is very athletic. He has very low body fat percentage. He can cut out coffee creamer and lose five pounds in a week. Like, I don't know how God designed this man, but he did. So like for me, having someone like that does not work for me. I need another female. I need another woman that really understands what it's like to have the mental load of being a mom and someone who works and someone who's a business owner and someone who is, you know, maybe struggling with perfectionist tendencies or struggling with, you know, the way you look or the way you feel like I need someone that's very similar to me in that sense. And someone to just check in on me. Right. And like, how's it going? Yeah. I said you were going to do this. What's going on? Girl, my husband's the same way. Like he's a marathon runner. He's a, he's an iron man. Like he's a triathlete and like, it's very frustrating and hence why like everything that we do is from the atomic habits for women philosophy, because I know when I was going through that transformation, it was great having him as an accountability partner as far as like meal prep and like, Oh, we're sticking to our healthy habits, but there was no way I could compare myself to be like, Oh, well, it was easy for him to work out every day. Whereas, you know, not to say that he doesn't take care of the kids. He's very, 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 very active and helps out around the house. He's an amazing husband, father, best friend, all the things, but it's just different because we're carrying such an invisible load that your spouse usually doesn't carry. So you have to search out other forms of accountability. I love a group setting with other like-minded females that are, you know, just, we're just trying our best, right? We're just trying our best. You know, when I, after I started that initial transformation, I actually joined a running group of other women and we would meet at five in the morning. We would go run three or four miles and then we would sit at Starbucks and have like either water or coffee or both. And I hate running. I do not like running, but I was like, I'm surrounded by these women. They're counting on me to be there. Like they would post in the group, like who's coming tomorrow. And if I said me, if I woke up the next morning and I'm like, I don't feel like going. And I'm like, oh, but you know, KJ is waiting on me. I'm like, okay, well I'm going to go. 
What are some other forms of accountability that you think are really helpful? Some tools and tricks like we love tracking, like habit tracking, because that gives you actual data to look at when you are feeling frustrated and gives you a little sense of accountability. I love putting it on the fridge so my kids and my husband see it too, or there's digital ones like we have a digital one in the shop. What are some other forms of accountability you like to use? I'm a huge fan of tracking. Um, I, and on the flip side or on the front side of tracking, something that I use a lot of my clients is planning it out. I've created a planner called the cultivate planner where you sit down and you write out not only your menu, but you're writing out your movement. So this is really a way for you to be intentional and realistic, right? Like if you say you want to run four miles a day, but maybe you're a teacher and your day starts at five 30 in the morning and you don't get home until 5 PM. And then the kids have baseball practice. And like, so it's a way to kind of marry your schedule with what you really want and what intentions you have for your movement. So we plan out when they're working out, what type of movement they're doing and what days are doing it. So as much as I love tracking before I can even get to the tracking, I love the planning of the workouts or movement. Um, so that's a huge one for accountability. I think like keeping it realistic and simple, you know, it doesn't have to be something that's super complex, right? Like if you're really wanting to prioritize movement, but maybe you don't have a gym you go to, maybe you don't have a fancy home gym. Um, why not, you know, keep it simple and start a little walking or running group in your neighborhood and get together with the other moms in your neighborhood and like try and find little ways that you can make it simple and, you know, use the people that are around you, use the other neighbors around you, the other moms around you. Maybe you're a teacher. Like I said, I work with a lot of teachers. Maybe you guys can, um, get a group together after school and you bring your shoes and you bring your workout clothes and you walk together after school. So like utilizing where you are and what you've got and keeping it super duper simple is a way to hold yourself accountable and hold each other accountable. For sure. I'm a big fan of Sunday planning, like just spending Mm -hmm. 10, 15 minutes. It doesn't have to be super long or where you go down a deep, dark hole. And an hour later, you've planned out your whole year (laughs) in one setting. Whereas you're just sitting there. If you know what's coming up throughout the week, as far as like everything for everyone else, right? Work, kids, deadlines, all the other things. But if you sit down and say, where do I fit in all this? And I'm a big fan of I plan out my health. I plan out my week on my Google calendar, but I write down my healthy habits, what I'm going to do throughout the week on a paper planner. I like to keep it separate because I feel like it gets cluttered and lost with all my other things for everyone else. So I love having a plan, but I love getting creative and just thinking about where you are. I think sometimes we make it too big in our head and like going to like the gym, it's a process, right? You're like, okay, I'm going to have to like pack my clothes ahead of time. Okay. I'm going to have to drive there. Okay. I'm going to change my clothes. Okay. Now I'm going to have to like go do my workout and it might take longer because I have to wait on certain machines. Okay. Yeah. I'm done with the workout. Now I have to drive home. Oh, I need to stop at the store on the way. And it, and it turns into like a three hour ordeal and you're like, forget it. I don't want to do it now. <laughs> you know yeah. what I mean? So meet yourself where you are. Utilize the people around you too. They'd probably be super thankful. And you're getting like a double whammy there, like connection time and movement, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. And something else you said earlier that, you know, I totally believe in, in terms of accountability is like calling us say calling your shot and like speaking it out into the world. So often if you're trying something new, if it's, you know, maybe a new way of eating, maybe it's just trying to drink your water. Maybe it's hitting your protein goals. Maybe it's walking your 10,000 steps a day. We don't say it because there's shame when we don't meet that goal and like shame grows in the darkness. So there's something about speaking it out into the world, whether it's telling your husband, telling your neighbor, tell your bestie, tell your mama, put it on social media. Cause that's where all my friends are anyways on my, on my virtual besties. Um, but speaking it out into the world and just saying what you're going to do, not because it has to be perfect and not because it has to be like we said, all or nothing, but speaking your goals out loud and putting your intentions out there is a big, big way to help hold yourself accountable. And you never know who you're going to inspire to, right? Like even when I'm doing something different, or if I'm trying, I'm going to do sober October, I'm going to dry January, or I'm going to try the whole 30 again, because I feel like crap. Like you never know who might need to hear that or who might need to see that and that right moment. And you could be inspiring somebody else by putting your goals out there in the world. 
lives. That's so powerful. That's so, so powerful. And again, just builds a bigger sense of accountability. And we're such nurturing beings too. And if you're in the forefront of your mind thinking, if I put this out there, maybe I'll inspire someone else. You might be more likely to keep doing it regardless if you think anyone's watching or not. (laughs) Right. Exactly. I love that so much. Well, I could talk about all things accountability, habit hacks all day with you, Jess, but we're going to cut it to one more. What is your favorite accountability habit hack that you use with your clients? What is your favorite one? Mm. My favorite one is doing a reflection and intention setting at the end of the month. So this is something that really allows them to kind of tap into the tracking that we've done tap into the goals that we've set. So at the end of the month, um, we will say, I'll ask them three questions and they know these are coming in our one-on-one sessions and, or in my membership. I'm like, okay, guys, I want you to think about the last month. I want you to think about what are you going to leave behind in this last month, whatever it is, right? I want you to think number two, what are you going to bring with you? that maybe you've learned or adopted from last month into this new month. And then number three, what are you calling in for next month? What is your intention? What are you calling in? What do you want more of? What are you, what do you, what is your goal basically? Um, so it's those three questions, but that is something that I have really liked doing. And that can be applied in so many areas. Like you could do that with your business. You can do that with your marriage and your family. Like, Hey, what's, what's going really like, what's working well. Like what I want to, what I want to take with me or leave behind or with your healthy habits, but taking that, you know, 10 minutes to reflect on what are you leaving behind? What are you bringing with you? And what are you calling in have been super, super powerful, not only personally, but for my clients also. Yeah. I love those questions so much. Cause I think sometimes we get so busy and the busyness of life, we don't slow down to really reflect and be like, that just isn't really working for me. So, okay, well, that's good. What do I want to do different next month? Or be like, oh, that's working really great for me. Great. I'm going to keep moving and grooving through that over the next month versus why does this feel clunky? Why does this feel uncomfortable? Why am I not doing anything? If you just sit down and just reflect, it doesn't have to be like super woo woo. You can just get out a journal, even just think about or type it in yeah. the notes in your phone, right? It's super, super easy. Yeah. And I like that it's not a pass fail grade. I like that. It's not a metric. Like it doesn't have to be a number on a scale. It doesn't have to be a before and after picture. If that yes. works for you, like babe, amazing do that. But a lot of people, a lot of women I work with that does not work for them. So we have to focus on other things. We have to focus on other non-scale victories. So that's just an interesting way to, um, be more aware about these, you know, other areas and other metrics that we can track. I love that so much. Well, Jess, thank you so much for this conversation. I love it so much. I'm sure our ladies are furiously taking notes. Where can everyone connect with you and find out more about you? Yes. Thank you for having me. So the best place to go is my website. That's where everything lives, um, which is just the fit life with Jessica.com. If you want to have more fun, you can come hang out with me on Instagram. <laughs> That's where Currently I'm making Taylor Swift and Travis Kelsey memes or really funny reels. Um, That's what's on Instagram. And that's at the fit life with Jessica. And then I've also got a free resource that I can share with you guys too. If you like podcasting, it is a free private podcast where I teach you how to plan a week of meals in under 20 minutes. So those are some awesome ways to learn from me for free. I'm all about an audio freebie. Thank you. (laughs) Let me listen while I'm doing the dishes. Let me listen while I'm walking. Like that is the key to my heart. Yeah. I don't need another PDF. That's going to sit in my inbox. Like girl, give it to me. I love it so much. All right, girl. We'll make sure to link all of that in the show notes, but Jessica, thank you so much for coming on the show and sharing your knowledge with us today. Thank you. Jess, thank you so much for this conversation. It's a good reminder that we have to meet ourselves where we're at and really experiment with what types of accountability work best for us. And as always, that women have to do how it's differently, right? So let's share my three biggest takeaways from this episode with Jessica Smith. So the first one is to know yourself. I love that she brought up the four tendencies. This is actually a quiz I have my clients do when they come into my signature course, the Healthy Habits Accelerator pod course, for them to know what motivates them to get habits done. And usually it's outside influences or it's internal influences. Maybe it's a little bit of both. I am personally an obliger. It's the most popular tendency where I need out 
side accountability. So you can just Google the four tendencies quiz and take it. But I have my girls take that quiz before they go through the pod course. That way they know when they're creating their habit loops, okay, when I create this habit loop, maybe I need some type of outside influence to ensure I do it. So this is really great. And I love that she brought up, we can't compare ourselves sometimes to our accountability partners and knowing yourself and who you are and how women have to do habits differently. She brought up, you know, comparing yourself to your husband, like, girl, I cannot compare myself to my husband. And I have to think about that in all areas of life, but also other women you see online. I love the idea of finding another woman in a similar season of life, work, whatever, as an accountability partner as well. Someone that understands you. If you're like, girl, my spouse, that is not a good accountability partner. I get that. But find someone that who's in a similar season of life that you are in, maybe has some similar goals. You know, like that's why I joined the running group was to find, I was like, okay, these girls probably are pretty motivated. They're taking care of themselves. Okay, let's do it. So, Keep that in mind. Know yourself. Start with the tendency. And when searching out outside accountability, know who is going to maybe motivate you more or demotivate you. Next, you need to change your mindset. I know that's like a fluffy like statement, but you really, really do. We all have that all or nothing mentality. I can't tell you how many times I had that Monday motivation high. Then I wouldn't do anything for months because I was like, ugh, I'm just too busy. I just, you know, I can't do anything. So I did nothing. Just brought up, stop breaking promises to yourself. Like I mentioned early on in the episode, sometimes you have to maybe make promises to yourself where other people are involved because we're such nurturing beings. Like even get your kids involved. If you're like, hey guys, I'm trying to work out or walk three days a week. Can you help mom be accountable for that? Like, girl, that is so inspiring to do that for your kids. And also, if you post it on social media, you're able to inspire others. It's so good. I love how she pointed out the quote, shame grows in the darkness. And a lot of times we are so ashamed of our past failures and always starting and stopping healthy habits. We're putting it out there like this, but in that atomic habits for women way where we're being more nurturing with it and inspiring others can really help you as well. But you got to start out so small. I mean, we complicate this. If we make it super duper duper tiny, you are going to get some small wins and momentum and it just snowballs from there, right? I didn't come out of the gate becoming a top ranked podcast, group fitness instructor, habit coach, being able to serve you all on this platform. No, it started with me just changing the way I ate food and like used food for like my emotions and it just snowballed from there and to be able to help folks in a more holistic way. And lastly, my favorite habit hacks that just shared was the first one is the reflection intention setting at the end of the month. And this works so much better for a lot of us more so than the number on the scale or before or after pictures. Kind of like we mentioned on an episode last week, sometimes you have to have the facts and the feelings or not look at the facts and just focus on how you feel. There's a couple of different ways to look at this. And sometimes if you don't know where you're going, you don't know if you're going the right direction. So we recommend doing this via a habit tracker, which is a really great way to see that data over time and use that when maybe you're feeling like, oh man, I just haven't been able to stick to this walking habit throughout the day. You're actually able to see that data and that feels really good. Or maybe you just lean into it. Man, I feel so good when I'm done walking. I have that fresh air. My kids are getting the best of me and you can lean into that as well. So you have to be intentional. You have to make a plan. And when you're sitting down to do like a Sunday reset, we do this with with our um, clients where every Sunday we make our habit hacking plan for the week. Week, I have a habit hacking trifecta plan to get you started because we got to start small, girl. And creating your habit loops, but also doing a next level deep dive into, okay, what, what forms of accountability can help me with this this week, right? It's one thing to get out a habit tracker, set your habit loops to reach your goals, but also take it a next step and think of what are various forms of accountability I can put out there to help me reach my goals. And girl, you will be feeling good in your favorite leggings before no time. Your husband's going to be walking by on his Friday work from home day and slapping you in the butt just because he can't help himself. (laughs) 
All right, girl. I hope today was super inspiring for you. I'll link everything, Jess Smith, in the show notes so you can go connect with her. And I hope today inspires you to find the form of accountability that is going to help you reach your health and fitness goals. You totally got this and I'm rooting for you. Hey girl, real quick before you go, did you know I have a secret podcast where I talk all about why most habit strategies don't work for us women? Spoiler alert, it's not our fault. (laughs) Visit bit.ly slash atomic habits for women. It's linked in the show notes to access my secret podcast series and have your biggest aha moment about why and how women have to do habits differently. And if you love the podcast, the number one way you can thank me is to leave a rating and review in iTunes. That way more mamas can find the show. Love and appreciate you, friend. We'll see you next time.